There was a time, before there were cars, when the camel was called the ship of the desert, the best way of carrying people and packages across sandy and rocky countryside. What helps make the camel ideal in dry climates is that it needs little water to survive. The hump on its back provides energy when food is hard to find. But given the right diet, camels don't need to drink much H2O, which is ironic since the new generation of motor vehicles might well depend on it. For water could provide emission-free fuel for the future. The image projected by TV advertising is that driving is an experience to enjoy. You don't need to see everything to know it's there. No keys, no gear stick, no handbrake. Because BMW believes innovation shouldn't mean complication. While sitting behind the wheel may be luxurious, comfortable, pleasurable, from outside, the picture is different. Cars use petrol or diesel. Petrol and diesel come from oil. Using oil leads to exhaust fumes, and exhaust fumes are said to be contributing to climate change. And what's more, oil is a non-renewable energy source. Once it's used up, there won't be any more, at least for a few million years. Now you're probably getting tired of watching television programs full of doom and gloom. It seems that adults spend all their time warning about the end of the world as they know it. In fact, they've been doing it for at least a hundred years, and probably longer. And yet we're all still here. Isn't it true that for every problem, something always comes up? Over the years, various alternatives to non-renewable energy sources have been tested, but oil still provides the main fuel for road transport. There have been prototype cars using renewable energy sources. Solar-powered cars like this, however, haven't proved to be practical. As for wind power, it seems to have got little further than the beach. And anyway, what happens when the wind drops? Which leaves us with water power. And the record here is good, since water has already been used successfully for transport. Old railway engines were powered by steam from water that was boiled on board. Trouble is, coal was needed to boil the water, and coal is non-renewable. But water could still provide the answer, because the approach now being taken by researchers uses water differently. We're testing for hydrogen today. And the standard test for hydrogen is... Hydrogen is one of the two chemicals lips. that makes up lips. water, and um, it's also the key to what's be being developed. And if the gas that we're testing is really hydrogen, we should be hearing a squeaky kind of a pop. When hydrogen burns, energy is released as heat, light and sound. Energy that can be used to drive the engine of a car. And as well as energy, something else is produced. For dripping from the test tube is water. A traditional car is powered when a mix of petrol and air is ignited releasing energy that forces down pistons inside cylinders, and this ultimately turns the wheels. But as well as energy, carbon dioxide and other pollutants are produced. The engine of the new clean energy car uses a mix of hydrogen and air. The outcome is the same, combustion, energy, power. What isn't the same is what comes out of the exhaust pipe. Because burning hydrogen produces only pure water, in fact, at demonstrations of the new clean energy car, they even drank water that had come from the exhaust pipe. 
Boy, it's better than LA tap water. BMW's research into the use of hydrogen as a fuel began back in 1979. In recent years, work on the Clean Energy Project has intensified as demand to reduce carbon dioxide emissions has grown and petrol prices have risen. The Clean Energy Hydrogen Vehicle has now driven over 100,000 miles. But there's still a big hurdle to overcome. Where can you buy hydrogen? At the moment, there are over 12,000 garages across the UK selling petrol. Hidden beneath the pumps are underground tanks storing the different grades of unleaded fuel and diesel. For the new clean fuels, new hydrogen storage tanks will be needed, which means new pumps like this prototype will need to be installed. And perhaps looking to the future, how about automatic pumps too? To sell hydrogen though, someone has to make it. There are massive oil refineries producing petrol and diesel. Where's the hydrogen going to come from? We're going to have a look at how water is split up into its two different elements. You know that there are two different... Back in the classroom, there's a way of showing how hydrogen can be made from water. It uses the energy from electricity and it's known as electrolysis. We've got an electric current going through the water, splitting it up into hydrogen and oxygen. And we've got the little bulb burning over there to just demonstrate that the current is going through the water. The water goes through the middle. The current that makes the bulb glow passes through the water between rods in each column. Electrodes, they're called. On one side, the positive electrode produces oxygen. And from the other, the negative electrode, you get hydrogen. Twice as much hydrogen as oxygen is produced. The split between oxygen atoms and hydrogen atoms are what? Who can remember? What should the split be? Two to one, miss. Two to one. And so what we'll see is six over there and roughly a 12 over there. So basically, you should see the two to one split in the amount of gas collected on top there. So once it's been produced, the gas can be collected. And how do we know that it's hydrogen? But you don't need complicated equipment to perform electrolysis. Let's drop it into the water, completely into the water, yes. And then we'll just lift it up and place it over there. Here, the electricity is passing between electrodes that are made of copper. In an industrial scale process, they would use platinum. But whatever the scale, the principle is the same. Oxygen, produced from the positive electrode, known as the anode. Hydrogen, produced from the negative electrode, known as the cathode. Yeah, you can see all the hydrogen bubbles forming at the bottom there and just moving up the test tube. <laughs> Excellent. But the whole process depends on electricity. And while electrolysis is a clean process, at the moment, most electricity comes from power stations that use non-renewable energy sources like oil and gas. With the new plan, the energy needed to generate electricity for large-scale production of hydrogen could come from solar power. If this becomes a reality, only sun and water will be needed to fuel the car of the future, and water will be the only byproduct, truly clean energy. What is already a reality is this prototype hydrogen-powered car. It looks no different from a petrol or diesel car. The hydrogen is stored in a tank, much as petrol is stored. But there is a difference. The electrical systems of the car don't use a traditional lead battery, but what is known as a fuel cell. It generates electricity by converting hydrogen and oxygen into water. But forces down pistons inside cylinders, and this ultimately turns the wheels. But as well as energy, carbon dioxide and other pollutants are produced. So what are the issues surrounding the use of hydrogen energy? 
Are they going to be the same as driving, you know, diesel car and petrol car? Are they going to be any difference or anything? No, they probably want to know um, if the hydrogen will cost less than the petrol or diesel that they're buying. With anything new, of course, it's going to be expensive in the beginning, but then the price will go down. You know that electricity is needed to actually split water, and somehow we need to generate that electricity to create the hydrogen. What, do, what, what are your thoughts on, on that? It kind of defeats the point if they make the electricity with fossil fuels, but if they did it using solar power or something else, then that would be great, because then it would save the environment. I think it's an investment as well, kind of, for yourself, for your car, but as well for the kind of world. Yeah, the world <laughs> and the environment. What's going to happen to all the factories that produce, you know, petrols and diesels? Oil is a fossil fuel, and it's not going to last forever. Well, when they run out, won't companies and people be forced to use other alternative methods like solar power and with hydrogen, so mm. they will have to use but there'll have to be a solution them. before it runs out because yeah, they can't let it run out and then bring up a solution, it won't work. But then the thing is that there's going to be, there's going to be technical changes in the cars. So the, you know people that study engineering stuff, they're going to have to study yeah. up about high Yeah, but that happens all the time. There's With new exactly. advances in medicine and engineering that, that and computing, cool. it's going to happen anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's been happening and it always will. You may have points you want to raise. BMW has committed itself to hydrogen technology. The clean energy car already exists. Perhaps we are looking to a future travelling on water. <laughs>